and there are people who are here who take this seriously who deserve protection from this type of property management. That's how it works. That is not correct, Mr. Todd. How about the fact that I submitted a letter to this court after you were at you and I agreed to demolish it. But then the, then I had an offer made to our company to sell the property. Does that not become a factor? I submitted a letter to you, Mr. Cobb. Did you have the courtesy to read it to the court? No, you said it was a fake letter. So that's the kind of grandstanding that I'm getting from you, Mr. Cobb, and I don't need it. So you continue to look, look back, dig back a little further and see what you can find. You might find something I did wrong, but I can guarantee you the city of Jackson did a few things wrong too, including the fire department. Tell me, I haven't had a response from either of you. What might have happened with that fire, fire report? What might have happened? Why did we get a fire report five months later? Your Honor. Not just three months, not just two weeks. That's just as irrelevant. Just as irrelevant as not irrelevant. It answers the question of why it took so long. Why don't you listen to what I'm saying? It answers the question of why it took me some time. That report was written on May the 14th. May the 14th, Mr. Cobb. So why is that irrelevant to his question? He said, why did I do it? Why didn't I get an asbestos report? Because we had plans to rebuild. But I ordered you to. You ordered me to what? Get an asbestos report. Why would I be ordered to get an asbestos report? Because that was my decision. Your decision to order an asbestos report on a building that's going to be rebuilt is not required. But I ordered it to be demolished. Your Honor, this is exactly why. Oh, yes. That's right. This is why I did it. Continue on. Continue the grandstanding. Why don't you continue the grandstanding, Mr. Cobb? Your Honor, at some point, this court is due respect from even a pro se litigant. And Mr. Mock's conduct here is way beyond the bounds of what we tolerate by a lawyer and is boring on what we tolerate by a pro se litigant. He is showing contempt of this court by his shouting and screaming in my ear. I'm pretty tough about stuff like that, and I'll be okay. But I think he's disrespecting this court by his entire approach to this issue. But you don't treat – but you treat all your property with this way. That's not true, Your Honor. That's not true, Your Honor. How many cases do you have here? Have you paid your – Try and find – try and dig up some more things, Your Honor. Have you paid the administrative costs on the – on your properties that have already been assessed? And in court, the transcript will show that I said I will need to arrange payments. We had a discussion. We had a discussion about what's going to happen, and I think you and Mr. Cobb said we will do what we need to do. If we need to sell the properties, we'll do it. That's the way it was ended because no one – there was not a payment schedule arranged because you said you're going to do what you need to do. All right. What do you – how do you propose to pay? I think you are going to take some steps. You're going to sell properties is what I understood. And I told that I – Your Honor. I proposed payments. I proposed payments, but you said payments were not allowed, Your Honor. You said I could not do it. That's not true. Well, he did. He said that with the properties you have, I won't be able to agree to take payments. You're going to have to make the payment. Your Honor, that's – Look at the transcript. I'm assessing $50 per day for five days, and we're going to come back next week. Thank you. Well, then what I think we need to do, we need to find out what's going on in this court. Can I get an answer about what happened on that fire department report, that false report that resulted in a $120,000 liability claim? How do I get to the bottom of that corruption? Your Honor, there's no corruption. And Mr. Mott – Oh, you would – Mr. Mott has counsel in the case, I believe, from the insurance company that affects the liability, and I think they know how to get those records. Mr. Cobb, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we have 400 low-income people. I can go to bed, feel confident that I helped these people with a roof over their head. Mr. Cobb, I don't see how you can lay down at the end of the day the way you treat me, the way you've got a vendetta against me, Mr. Cobb, and you know it. Check with others in town. They know it, too. Check with people in this room. They know it, too. They know you've had a vendetta against me. Instead of me being able to come in here and just report what I had to do, you had to put me on the stand, which I don't care because I don't tell lies. You managed to tell some untruths along the way now and then without backup. I don't. I try very hard not to. So that's where we're at right now. Why are we doing this in environmental court? Why are we making an issue of it? This is 
is a shame. 